In this lesson, we'll continue our review of PSAT Math Test 2, Section 3, No Calculator, Questions 5 through 8. All right, let's take a look at problem 5. If x, y is the solution to the system of equations above, what's the value of x? And we saw a couple problems like this in the first video, questions 1 through 4, linear equations, finding the solutions. Here we have a system, and so I would recommend to find the value of x, we can use elimination. You could also use substitution, but I think it's a little tougher for this type of question, I'd, I'd save substitution for word problems. And so what I mean by that is what we can do to get rid of one of the variables, here we have a negative 3x, this is a positive x, I'm going to multiply this bottom equation by 3. So I get 3x, when we add them together the x's cancel out. And so I'll rewrite them here, we get 3x, negative 3x minus 4y equals 20. Bottom equation I'm multiplying by 3, so 3x minus 30y. 16 times 3 is 48, and now I just add them together. The x's cancel out, and we get negative 34y equals 68. And so y is negative 2, but be careful. The question's not asking for y. We have to solve for x. And so I'm just going to take this second equation before we multiply it by 3. x minus 10y equals 16, and we're going to plug in negative 2 here. Negative 2 times negative 10 is 20. So x plus 20 equals 16. We subtract 20, and we get x equals negative 4. So the answer is C for that one. All right, let's take a look at question 6. The equation y equals 36 plus 18x models the relationship between the height y in inches of a typical golden delicious apple tree and the number of years x after it was planted. If the equation is graphed in the xy plane, what is indicated by the y-intercept of the graph? Another common question on the test. And let's just write this out. Y equals, I'm going to put it in slope intercept form, 18x plus 36. So Y, we're going to label as the height. And in inches, X is years. Okay, so just by looking at this, you can see each year, every time X goes up by 1, we know the height is going to increase by 18. That's the slope. And what is 36? Well, 36 is when it's the y-intercept. When x is 0, when the tree was planted, that's the height. And so this is a very common question. You didn't have to write this out. I think some students would just look at this and realizing that this 36 is the y-intercept when x is 0, the years in this case. That's the initial height when it was just planted. And so let's take a look at the choices here. It's, is it the age in years when it's planted? Not the age, right? Because the y is height. That's what we labeled it, the height in inches of typical apple tree when it's planted. And so that's the answer. 6 is B. All right, let's take a look at 7. Giovanni wants to buy shirts that cost $19.40 each and sweaters that cost $24.80 each. An 8% sales tax will be applied to the entire purchase. If Giovanni buys two shirts, which equation relates the number of sweaters purchased P and the total cost in Y? We don't have to solve it. We just have to set this up. Now we're told he buys, we have the number of shirts he buys, too. We know that each shirt is, is 1940. So that we can figure out right away. We can just multiply this by 2. And we know that is $38.80. So this is the shirts. Now we don't know how many, what the P is, right? And um, for the purchase. So, so we don't know what the sweaters cost. And... Um, P is the number of sweaters. We don't know what that is, but we do know the cost of each sweater is $24.80. And also there's a sales tax of 8%. So we have the shirts plus we know that $24.80 times whatever P, this is going to be the total amount he spends. We have two shirts and again, this is sweaters based on P, how many he bought. But remember, this whole amount, when you add it together, gets assessed an 8% tax. And so this whole amount, how do we represent that? Well, it's an increase. So we multiply it by 1.08, right? One is the original amount, 100%, but then we're adding a sales tax. Now, if this were a discount, sometimes you'll see this problem with a discount where he has a coupon and there's no tax. Let's say the coupon was 12%, then you'd multiply this whole equation by 0.88. So just be careful, this is an increase here. And so that's just what we're looking for. So which one has that? Well, it looks like A. Here's our, the cost of the shirts, two shirts. We don't know the number of sweaters, but whatever that number is, it's multiplied by 24.8 P. And that whole amount, the brackets, multiplied by 1.08, and that is the cost Y. So the answer is A. And let's take a look at the last question from this page, number 8. 
A line is graphed in the xy plane if the line has a positive slope and a negative y intercept, which of the following points cannot lie on the line? And so I have this new feature I'm just going to try out now. <laughs> Um, be able to draw a line here. So I can make a straight line here and here. I don't really need to do this, but I'm just showing it. And so we're, we're told that the line has a positive slope and a negative y-intercept. I'm going to change colors too. And so here it would look something like, oops, I'm having trouble with the color, but anyway. All right, so we know it is going to look something like that. And there, the question says, which of the following cannot lie on the line, right? It has a positive slope, a negative y-intercept, which cannot lie on the line. If you look at these choices, negative 3 and negative 3, that's down here. That could, right? How about B, negative 3, so that's over and then up. Is there any way, right, in quadrant 2, we could have a point there? No. And so this one is definitely the choice, and the answer here is B.